Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us on Authors on the Air. My name is Danielle Gerard, and I am the uh, USA Today bestselling author of 15 suspense novels. And I am here today with Matt Coyle, who has won more awards probably than I have uh, room to tell you about. But he is the multi-time winner of the Anthony, uh, the Anthony Award and the, has won the Seamus Award, the San Diego Book Award. Um, let's see, oh my gosh, what am I missing here? The Ben Franklin Award and Lefty Award and is currently nominated as the, what is it, Matt? You got to correct me here. Best, best Book of the Year, I think, for Authors on the Air, Global Radio Book Network. of the Year for it's Authors like on the Air. That's super exciting. So, Matt, we are here today to talk about Last Redemption, which is out this month. What day is it coming out? November 30th, last Tuesday November of the month. November 30th. Okay, that's super exciting. So, yeah. this is the eighth book in the Rick Cahill series. And I thought we would start um, with a little bit about how Rick Cahill came to be. Um, so, tell us about that. What was the what, what was the inspiration for Rick? Um, has he developed the way you expect him to? Tell us a little, for those people who haven't met Rick yet, yet tell us about him. Yeah, um, Rick is a former cop. Uh, he was on the Santa Barbara Police Force uh, maybe 18 years ago now, as, as Last Redemption opens up. He was about on for about two and a half years when his wife was murdered. He was um, arrested for the murder, never convicted, but never exonerated either. He's kind of, for many years, thought to be the guy who got away with murder. And he matriculated back to San Diego, uh, where he worked in a restaurant for a while. Now he's a private investigator. And he, um, y y your question was, you know, did he evolve the way I expected him to? That's a great question. And no, actually. Um, Tell us how. First, what do you mean? Yeah, when I first started writing him, um, I had the was very fortunate to have to go to a very first writers conference I went to, which was Southern California Writers Conference. And Alan Russell, who's a um, San Diego writer and has done really well, Thomas Immersion, was one of the unfortunate people that had to read a submission of, you know, early work, what they do at, at those conferences. And uh, he said, you know, he can write, which was good because, I, I mean, this is probably the first revision or somewhere, you know, the poor guy had to read. And back then they read a lot of pages, like 30, yeah. 30 pages yeah. or something. So, so you can write, but it's too autobiographical. You know, you, you have to move further away from your yourself. And I think that's the best advice I ever got mm -hmm. that I can remember because, you know, my life's been pretty boring. And um, Rick was Rick was much lighter in the earlier things I was writing. And thinking about what Alan told me, with each revision, I moved further and further away from my own life and into a Rick's life. And I've told the story before, but I'll tell it again. Please. Something came to me during a, a late revision or middle revision, I say, which was which was uh, the line became the first uh, first sentence to, the, to yesterday's echo, which was the first time um, I saw her, she made me remember and she made me forget. And to me, that made me realize how dark this guy's past had been much darker than I was writing. Give me a much better idea of his background, his backstory. So from there, I, I, I went evolved or evolved and developed. But I really didn't. I mean, some of the things he's done, he's broken a lot of laws. He's broken God's laws. Uh, and I never imagined that in the beginning. But I'm, I'm happy that it took a darker turn. And um, yeah. I'm always trying to walk the edge of uh, living by his own code, but but still likable, still not unlikable. So that's my balance every time, every book. Well, I think you strike that really well. And before we talk about the things that he's done, but also the things that have happened to him, because yeah. he doesn't have a very easy experience in the books uh, that I've read. I want to talk about, um, you know, for people who are joining um, the the Rick Cahill. Do you? I feel like I've read a couple of the books out of not in order, mm -hmm. um, and I feel like you do a really great job. Um, and I'm sure people compare your books both in tone and in that, and in that way as well as other ways with Michael Connolly's books because yeah. there's definitely some some similarities there, which obviously I think is a huge compliment. And I hope you do too. Um, but address that, you know, do we, do we need to go back to, to book one with Rick um, or, you know, can people pick up and start with last redemption and then, and then the venture back? What's your thought on that? Right. Well, as it's the next one coming out, of course they can, but um, no, it is something that I, I really think about with each book. I, I try not to think too much when I'm writing a book, but that is one thing I, that's on my mind is, 
I don't want to bore my continuing readers. I want to give new readers enough information to get a feel for Rick and why he makes some of the decisions he makes. But I don't want to spoil things for them either if they do like book eight and want to go back to the beginning. So I'm always happy, and I'm glad you said that, when a reviewer says, can read as a standalone. Yeah. Um, so it is it is really the one thing I really give a lot of concentration to. Um, but yeah, I think I think they can. I think this one in particular can definitely be read as a standalone. And there would be things that perk your interest in, in learning out how he got to be who he is. But I, I think it does work uh, probably maybe one of the better ones as a standalone. Yeah. And I had no, and I had no problems and I haven't, I didn't read the one before this, although I think I read the one before that. And um, I had no problems uh, jumping right back in and it did make me wonder. There's a few things that are new in there um, that I was like, Oh, I better go back and, and figure out what happened. So there's a couple of big topics in this book um, that are, you know, that are not our normal, like, you know, there's a lot of stuff like, obviously missing people and murders, but there's a lot of, there's a couple of things here in this book that are, that are different to read about. Um, and I'd like to hear you talk about that. The first one is that, you know, without, I don't think we're spoiling anything from, by saying that Rick is experiencing some medical um, right. difficulties, uh, specifically he's got CTE and maybe you can uh, tell the, the audience what that is and explain a little bit why, why you gave that to um, poor Rick, who's been through the ringer. Yeah. It is on the first page, so it's not a spoiler. But I do oh, have good. to. Thank goodness, thank goodness. I do have to look it up to be able to sell it to say it correctly, and I probably yes. Won't. He's chronic, got chronic traumatic, traumatic encephalopathy. Yeah, which that, is, encep that last word I was right. Like, I don't say that. That's why I have to read it. It's CTE, as, as sports fans know, the called the pro football disease, which they <clears throat> there's never a true diagnosis until the patient's dead, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Just about every football player that they've ever done an autopsy on and opened up his brain and look for it and has had it. And um, when I started writing Rick a million years ago, I had one rule that was important to me was that everything that happens to him and every bad decision he makes have to have repercussions. So, and that includes the physical, the physical, the physicalness of his life. And I never, and you talk about did Rick evolve the way you expected. Um, I never anticipated him coming down with this disease, but I looked at the things that's happened to him and I've, I've, People have read me all along, on, you know, they've seen the scars of the emotional um, thing, emotional scars that have come about from decisions he's made and things that have happened in his past. But he's had, he's had a lot of physical trauma. He played high school. He played football like Pop Warner through second year of college. So that's probably like eight or 10 years. He, he was a Golden Gloves boxer. He's had concussion as a, as a private eye. I just I thought, well, shit, this is kind of where this needs to go. Um, and it's not the smartest idea if you're writing a series, but <laughs> I thought I had to be true to it. So, um, yeah. and it's, you know, people are sort of aware of it now. Um, and I did some research on it, not really heavy, but got a lot of help from, from Doug, uh, Lyle, of course, everybody knows. Mm -hmm. He's Doug. Great. Um, and I just thought, yeah, you know, you get, you gotta do this. Um, not an easy one, but that's where you ended up. I, I didn't see any other way around it. Because, because I have, I get a hard time from somebody uh, like Lee Goldberg in particular gives me a hard time about how much damage I put Rick through. So, but if I'm going to do that, it's got to show. Right. And it does have big repercussions for future books. I mean, he's already experiencing some, right. um, some, you know, some related uh, trauma uh, for, from the CTE. And it, it obviously that does affect, um, it's going to affect his life. Um, depending on how it develops and how quickly it right. develops. Um, well, it, it was really interesting to read about. I, I agree that you, you know, I'm not a huge sports fan. I had of course heard of this because it's been in, in the news and in, in, it's been, you know, in a, a movie with Will Smith. That's pretty much how I hear about these kinds of things. Right. Um, but, um, but I thought, you know, you gave us a really good a view into sort of what that was like, both from sort of the the, the medical side of it and, and more specifically from Rick's experience, which then there's um, some really interesting things that developed that I will not ruin for the reader because you have to get the book. Um, <laughs> the second thing that I, I kind of want to talk about is the genetics aspect of the plot. Um, again, without, you know, giving away uh, anything too important, there are, there are some elements of the plot that talk about the sort of deal with the race towards... Um, you know, and specifically around cancer through genetics. And I, yeah. I'm curious, because that was, a you know, we are dealing, we are in this world where, you know, things like 23andMe and we're all, um, 
we are starting to learn uh, all sorts of bizarre things about uh, one another through our genetics. So tell me how that kind of came to be and, and you know, what was the, the how did that, how were you inspired that way? Right. As many uh, things that happen, many ideas that come to me as I'm writing, it wasn't my initial target. I was, uh, you mentioned 23 and me, and I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't remember specifically what I was looking for, but it had something to do with kind of the 23 and me, the genetics hereditary sort of thing. And then I just, in research, I came across um, DNA, cancer research, how um, there is research out there, how they're potentially finding um you know what your cancer that you may you may get in the future and i thought well shit i said shit twice so far i said shit three you four have times. i'm not swearing i'm being so good but i i'm keeping a little tally that's right but anyway I, I haven't said anything I, I'll, I'll throw out some others later but um <laughs> so i i thought well if this can happen and, and the research i did when i wrote this book it was like a year and a half ago now probably yeah um, they hadn't quite gotten there yet, but I thought, uh, well, this is going to be worth a lot of money if it happens, not only for, um, you know, medical research, but pharmaceuticals, if they can find out what, if you can find out what cancer is in your, potentially in your future, and if there's drugs that they can give you now to deal with that, right. that's a lot of money there. So it's kind right. of one of those things. I go, I went looking for something else and um, found something kind of interesting. So I, I went with it. It was really interesting, and I think it out of a um, a real element of sort of that, you know. Uh, I mean, these are dark, you know, wonderfully dark um, police books, but it added a little of that sort of, um, I want to say, like frenzied race um, element to the book, which I think really um, made the pace really keep going for me. I had a hard time putting it down. Um, and I was in Italy, so you can, that really says a lot, you know, I mean, there's a lot of I, things. I, I, saw Italy. Post and I, I can't believe that we hit you up when you were in Italy. That, uh, no, I'm back now. It's great. I, mean, um, I know, I know. But, but it was super fun to read. And I, um, and I actually, I mean, I hauled it all the way to Italy and home. That's how much, you know, I appreciate this book. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about Rick because, you know, he's such an interesting um, character. And one of the things, um, one of the, the elements of this plot also is the way in which he helps his longtime partner and loyalty seems to be um, a really um, big thing for Rick. He, he emphasizes how you know, the, the, the missing person in this book is, is the son of his um, partner and he doesn't necessarily have strong feelings for that, for the son, but he does have such no. sort of loyalty no. to his partner. So talk about that. Is that, um, it feels like something we see in every Rick Cahill book. Um, where did that come from? And, and is that just, do you think that's just important for a main character or is it spurred from something specific that's happened to him? Well, it, it does, it does spur from some, some mistakes he made before the first book even came out uh, yesterday's echo um where he wasn't loyal to someone very important in his life and it ended up kind of having just not kind of ended up having disastrous results but he's also he hasn't had there aren't many he doesn't have many friends in the books mm -hmm. he doesn't have a whole pal a whole group of pals but when he, he latches on to somebody and he and moira moira that's his, uh moira mcfarland his sometime partner they she's a pi too and he always says she's smarter than he is and, and um like he's kind of a reactionary where she's the, she's the deeper thinker. She's kind of the brakes, puts brakes on him whenever they work together. And she's very, she is, um, I'm not gonna say stoic, but she's pretty, she's really got her life under control. And when she, when she's so upset about, upset about her son, uh, Rick feels the need, you know, here's just somebody, I don't have many friends, but she's really been there for me. I put her through some really horrible things. Um, things that could put her in jail possibly. And so he feels a loyalty to her. He loves her as a sister. I mean, they have this weird, very um, um, hard contact relationship, but they do care about each other. So when that, when <clears throat> she needs help, and he doesn't seem like it's gonna be a big thing. He's kind of reclused himself now because right. he's got the disease. He's going to be another spoilers on the first page. He's his girlfriend who he lives with is pregnant. Who he lives with most of the time. He's pregnant. He's going to be a father. That he lost his first wife, as I mentioned earlier, um, when he was in his twenties. He never thought he'd be a father again. He never thought he'd be in a great relationship again. 
so then anybody has got this other thing. So he's, he's now taking cases where he doesn't go out of the office much. He's able to do some background checks and he's got some big corporations he worked for. So he, may, he can, he can make a living doing it, but he kind of has this yearning to get back out on the street. But he's, he gets at, uh, Moira asked him just to watch her son because he's been uh, his girl, his girlfriend, <clears throat> his son's girlfriend, <clears throat> excuse me, has taken out a temporary restraining order on him. And Moira thinks maybe he's broken it. And so Rick follows him. But he, this seems like, a, you know, it's a pretty nothing case. He, do, he does or he do, doesn't. Uh, but in doing so, of course, at least other things we mentioned. But um, in getting out there, he realized how much he misses being out and doing things, taking cases that matter, as it says, means to him. But yeah, the loyalty thing, he's got, he's going to be a father. He's going to be a whole different life for him. He's, right. he's in a relationship. His, the whole time we've known Rick in these books is he, it's been him and his dog. Midnight. midnight. Midnight, yeah. No other responsibilities. He makes right. a bad decision. You know, maybe somebody's going to have to take care of Midnight for the rest of their life, but that's it for him. But now he has to judge these things. I'm, I, I love Leah. Um, I'm going to be a father, a miracle child. Okay. And uh, every decision he makes now, he do, he has those dual loyalties of helping his best friend and right. doing what's right for his potential family. Right. And, you know, it is interesting because in this book, unlike the, the last book I read that, that also included Moira, it is the, their relationship's a little reversed. He has to sort of put the brakes on her a bit. Right. She's, um, you know, as every as was totally understandable, um, you know, he, she's a frantic mother. And like you said, I, uh, the last the other thing that is not a spoiler, not a spoiler, that he's going to be a father. He starts he understands a little bit more how she must feel. So right. I was actually that was kind of one of the last things I wanted to talk to you about, because, you know, we do see Rick in this, you know, he's he's dealing with a you know disease. And that, and more than that, he's he has to change his life so that Leah and his baby um, aren't going to be subjected to a lot of the uh, things that have happened to him uh, in the past. Because obviously these people, they don't stay outside his, you know, they come to his house, they they really um, track him down. And once Leah and the baby are around, he won't want that. But he does, he is really torn. There is a huge part of Rick that you can, that you sense throughout the book, um, loves that sort of out, He, you know, he's, He's clever. He's a he's a um, he's physical. He's he's a quick thinker. He wants to be working these hard cases, and he wants to be bringing down the big bad guys, uh, not just necessarily doing the um, the you know the background check stuff, even right. though that is that is really secure and safe. So, what is where does that leave Rick? I mean, in this, I'm assuming in book nine, we're going to be, you know, Rick's going to have a baby and a wife. Um, how are we going to keep him, how are we going to keep everybody safe, Matt? I need to know. Well, he retires and everything works out. Um, <laughs> well, that is, uh, it is, <laughs> it is, uh, it's the next, uh, book nine is the next, um, iteration of how can this guy have a normal life and, uh, the dual, uh, loyalties that pull on him and the, the inclinations the responsibilities and also this kind of insane need to find the truth for people and manic sort of need and to, and to do his own form of justice. Um, yeah, that's exactly uh, what book nine, which was called, will be called doomed legacy um, comes out in about a year, but wow, yeah, that, that um, you know, and I put this guy on a short clock now, so it's um, I'm not sure if I did the right thing, but it makes for good reading. I think. Yeah, it, it, you know, the CTE is going to be an interesting, and you probably know a little bit more than I do about how long people can live with that and exactly yeah. how it degrades uh, the mind, but it'll it'll certainly make for an interesting um, future for the series, whether it shortens it or not. Um, it's really exciting. So tell us a little bit about, the book's coming out November 30th. Um, yeah. Where are you going to be out and about signing books and doing well, these talks? Tell us. As you, as you probably know, I'm going to try as hard as I can to get in front of people. I will be at Warwick's in La Jolla in San Diego on um, November 30th. In front of people, that's where we are now. And then uh, two days late, no, on the 2nd of the 4th of December, I'll be at Book Carnival in Orange County with Ann Saylor. And uh, that will be in front of people. And then I'm doing uh, I'm doing Poison Pen, the, the third, or the second rather, video in you know, a Zoom. Yes. 
I'm doing a murder by the book zoom. I'm doing, um, kind of blanking out now. I'm doing some other zoom things. I'm kind of, I'm hoping to get in front of more people, but, um, I don't, it's not up to me, but I, I see a book behind you called far gone. I believe that's your latest. Let me talk about that. that. Is. It's much Thank bigger. You. It's much bigger than it looks when you bring it forward. Look at that's it. right. This is my latest book. Thank you, Matt. This is far gone. I uh, came out in June of this year. It's the second book in the, um, Badlands Thriller series set in uh, Hagen, a fictitious town of Hagen, North Dakota. Wow. So the first book in that series is Whiteout, which I would find, but I have my office is undergoing a remodel. So I can't, I can barely, I could barely find that. So, um, but you can check me out at daniellegerard.com. And Matt, where can uh, people find out more about you? Uh, MattCoylebooks.com. I'm on Facebook with pictures of my dog on his couch. Um, you know, Matt Coyle, Facebook, whatever. Uh, Instagram, mcoil 44 and then on Twitter, I know how to retweet things, I think. I'm I'm worthless on Twitter, but, well, listen, this was so fun. It was great to hear about this. Last Redemption, you guys, I, um, I really, I, I really love Rick Cahill and enjoyed talking to you today, Matt, and uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us on Authors on the Air today with me, thank Danielle you. Girard, and Matt Coyle.